Hi, I'm Lisa Brooks. I'm 25 years old and I'm currently reading for the world's first engineering doctorate into advanced snowboard design. I also work for the Engineering Technology Board part-time as a visiting lecturer, so I go around to schools and colleges explaining why science and technology is so interesting and not the boring things that I was told it was when I was at school. I first got interested in sort of snowboard design at a really high level when I was watching the Olympic Games that were held in Torino in 2006. And I saw Leslie McKenna drop in on the half pipe. She's our athlete. And I thought, hey, you know, why can she go that high? Why can she perform those tricks? How does the board spring up like that? How does she manage to twist it between her feet when she's manoeuvring it through the pipe? And when she falls over, why did that happen? Is there something that I could do as an engineer to stop that happening or to make her ride better, faster and jump higher? So what actually goes into a snowboard? What's it made of? Um, I thought maybe perhaps it was just one solid piece of wood or something, which I think is the view that a lot of people have. And in fact, it's far more complicated than that. A snowball is actually what's known as a composite material. Now, a composite material is two or more materials bonded at the macroscopic level. So macroscopic, something we can see. A really big visual example of this is the reinforced concrete that you get. So you have concrete with steel rods running through it to increase the um, strength of the concrete so it's not as liable to snap and be brittle and break so you're combining the properties of two different materials to get one better overall property now in a snowboard we've got um mainly glass fibers running through the board you can see a cut through sample here which conveniently has a clear top sheet on it's one of our models from last season now you've got glass fiber on the top these glass fibers are then injected with a resin so what this resin does is it causes them to go hard and retain some sort of structural rigidity. Inside we've got a filler material. In this case it's a wooden core. You can see the laminations of the core in this cut through sample. And then on the bottom we've got another glass fibre layer. So you've got these two layers of glass fibre adding to the stiffness and then you've got this wood core inside as a filler material. Now with snowboards what's also important to remember is they bend in different ways at different places on the board. So we've got the uh, single sort of sheet of glass fibre running through, but why do they behave differently? Why is it more springy in the tail? Why does the tail bend more? Well, that's something that's known as the second moment of area of the board that affects that. So in the, the middle of the board here, we're quite thick. We've got a nice sort of, you know, good 10 mil of um, snowboard thickness there. That's increasing the second moment of area, so making the board quite stiff. Whereas as you go out to the nose and tail of the board, those would be a lot thinner. We're talking maybe only 5 mil total thickness. So the second moment of area is going to decrease the stiffness of the board overall, so it's going to be able to bend more. And that thus enables the rider to spring it up and jump higher. I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation and hope to see you in the future with a bit more info.